Hello everyone and welcome back. Today's build is looking at the most underused grenades for the Scylla subclass, which are Firebolt grenades. Firebolt grenades have always been an odd ability to use, as it has a low cooldown rate which is great for high discipline and grenade users, but its attack is quite weak compared to the other grenades available. On top of that, its range is also short and can be easily avoided by all types of enemies. So why exactly am I doing a video based around them now? Well. Bungie has given us two seasonal mods named Flare Up and Rain of Firebolts to really push us to use them more, and although they have made Firebolts a lot more effective, it's not fully enough to make many players want to switch over. However, with today's build, I will show you why using them for this season is worth that risk. They provide an easy way to ignite users constantly, a high spam ability rate, and scorch galore, and so much more with the rest of the video. To start, you're going to want to have Touch of Flame so that our fireball grenades have increased radius and target count. Then you want Heat Rises, where you can use your weapons and abilities while gliding in the air. While airborne and have Heat Rises active, getting a kill will grant you melee energy. The enhancements for fireball grenades via Touch of Flames are generally more designed for PvP rather than PvE, considering its base effects are good for PvE already. As fireballs are weak on their own, but can scorch pretty good, the ideal choice of action will be to lean into this weakness and use your chosen melee to cause targets to ignite for larger damage. One firebolt and incinerate snap is enough to cause a boss to ignite, and from here this is where you should be aiming for. Looking into the fragments, Ember of Ashes where you apply more scorched stacks to targets, Ember of Torches where power melee attacks against targets make you and allies radiant, Ember of Resolve where solo grenades final blows cure you, and Ember of Searing where defeating Scorched targets grant melee energy and creates fire sprites. It's similar to our last solo build, the new Resolve Fragment will allow any solo grenades to heal after each kill, which works out perfectly for the setup we have. Since this will allow us to survive for longer, and Firebots have better targeting and tagging opportunities once used. You will need to lean into enhancing all Scorched sources so that we can pull off a constant ignition with what we got. This is where you will need to have the Dawn Cause Exotic available as well, as this will further enhance our Scorch ability, but also help us out with getting melee energy back just from Scorching alone. With our Fragments and Dawn Cause combined, this will allow us to have a better balance out as to what mods will be needed when using both Discipline and Strength all in one. If you do this part correctly, then you have more freedom to explore what additional items you want to add on later on. For the mods and stats section, you need to find a balance between your grenades and melee so that both can support each other, but also offer enough room for the users to expand if need be. Resilience, Discipline and Strength are the main stats to focus on for the build, with Discipline being the main priority. As we will be getting two grenades thanks to the Rain of Firebolt artifact, and with its currently low cooldown rate, we can pretty much go for tier 7 to 10, and then add on any given energy replenishment mods to backfill the covered areas. Because of the short cooldown rate that firewall grenades have, it means that we can invest less or more into the stats and still benefit greatly from them without the user needing to compromise on their end. I went with a high stat just so that we don't need to rely on other weapon perks such as Demolitionist to support us even more, as I wanted to explore more with weapon choices available for the build. So having grenade kickstart, absolution, bomber and distribution mods are all that I went for generally and is truthfully all that you should go for as well. The regen timer for each grenade is going to be fast anyways, so you won't need additional kickstarts or bomber mods from here on out. And if you play in a sort of 1-2 manner where you start fights with a grenade and then finish with a melee, you'll be able to grant energy back for the two very easily. While you're there, you can leave your strength stat at tier 5 because of heat rises, the given fragments, and dawn chorus all chipping in. However, do add on the momentum transfer mod as this will provide an extra layer of melee energy just from using your grenades. From here, it then leaves you with the armor charge mods to sustain the build for long. Charged up and stacks on stack is going to give you that extra plus one of armor charges once active, and at max, it's going to be giving you four. After that, adding on a solar cipher mod and firepower mod will both help with creating orbs of power as we go along. Also, if you have the slot left over, then I would also recommend you add on the Ashes to Assets mod since it's cheap, easy to proc, and works well with both supers you decide to use. 
Now, lastly, the weapons being used will ideally need to have incandescent on it so that we can create scorch from kills and also use it to trigger ignitions via our grenades and melee. Which one you pick does not matter as you just need one that will help with dealing with adds of all types. However, I've gone with the Callus Mini tool as it's a very effective weapon with incandescent and it hits hard in all activities. It being a 900 RPM means we can ammo dump majors to me bosses with a slightly clean precision hit within effective range. Although anything outside of his range will cause weapon to fall off, most of the time combatants will be in close range while using the weapon. Plus, our melee and grenade both have short ranges, so in many ways it kind of plays within our strengths. You could also use the Sunshot Exotic Hand Cannon as the weapon has now been allowed to apply Scorch on targets. With how strong his AoE effect is, it's definitely worth investing in and looking into further for most solo builds now. Now, although I would leave Heavy out for most users since there are different preferences, if you've already got a good solo secondary to rely on, then having a heavy solo can also help with burn up scorch damage for kickstart and ignitions. The Maris Lion C with Spike, Envious Assassin and Incandescent is a must have role for those who want to mag dump and ignite bosses rather quickly. It's a really good fun weapon to use and when you overthrow the weapon and see just how chaotic it can be with everything else working hand in hand, it really does match the flow of the build we're going for. So the overall conclusion to build is that firebolt grenades are not my most favourite circle grenades to use in most content because of how weak they are and feel in general and the majority of content that allows them to shine in just don't really allow them to shine that much. Their range is poor and damage as well throws the ability to decide when compared to fusion or solo grenades that hit harder and scorch even better. Now, they aren't outright useless as they can still be used if you tend to use them for igniting targets, plus their quick cooldown rate allows users to use them much more faster compared to everything else we have. This is where the build currently falls under as we can make them stronger if we use varieties for example, but the damage for them isn't what I was aiming for. My goal for the build is to utilize the new seasonal mods and make the grenades more viable in all content currently to where it would usually feel weak to use them in. Both Flare Up and Rain of Firebolts will allow users to apply more Scorch for your grenades, but also having two instead of one, so you can easily use them one after another if you wish. Both Flare Up and Rain of Firebolts will allow users to apply more Scorch for your grenades while also having two instead of one, so you can easily use them one after another if you wish. With the high ability regen they offer, we can cause ignitions to occur at a much higher rate, which can clear our areas even if the grenades don't get a kill. The point of the build is to not make this an OP unstoppable Starfire protocol endgame build as we have plenty of that already, but instead to show you how to make firebolts more useful with what we got. They would never be meta, but with how strong ignitions are thanks to Solar 3.0, it will give players a new way to use Solar if they don't want to keep using the same common setup that everyone is already familiar with. Sadly, the seasonal mods will most likely be gone by the end of the season and whether you use them afterwards will be 50-50. However, even without the mods, you still have a setup that can be relied on from here onwards. You'll just need to make up what's currently lost. But what do you think? So there we have it. I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on the content shared, then please leave a comment below. While at the same time, if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos in the future, then leave a like and sub button here. I will leave a dim link for the build below. And if you want more stuff like this, then I have a playlist available covering all types of builds you desire. It was great sharing today's video with you all. I hope to see you again soon.